must come Come Take me home Come Jesus come Jesus, come, come, take me home, come, Jesus, come. All right, we're back in the dungeon over here. <laughs> um, I want to come to you guys today uh, to ask you uh, to intercede with me in prayer. But I want to talk to you first a little bit about some of the stuff that's in the news right now. And I've asked uh, numerous people to have their subscribers also pray on this particular day. The day will be May 15th. So remember that. It's coming up very shortly. Um, I've asked Fire Charger and Eternal Rhythm Flow and Jamie and several other ones to have their subscribers pray also. We'll see if that happens or not. But um, in the news, we know that uh, there's trouble in Syria, and the Lord had given me a dream about Syria, and I saw three missiles launched, uh, first one, then two, and they went out and turned back and went towards Israel, and then I saw what uh, was a nuke flash, a nuclear flash, so I couldn't look towards it, but I did see it out of the side of my head. I tried to turn my head, I couldn't, so I don't know what that means. But if you'll look at my channel and you'll look at all the things that I've said that were going to happen, all those things have happened except for that nuke flash and those three missiles and except for the actual rapture and the 9.0 earthquake, which I believe will happen just before the rapture takes place and that will happen in California. But all the other things have happened, including the one that the Lord told me that I didn't put on there. There are many that I didn't put on that have happened because I didn't know what to do with this information. And I didn't know if God was giving it to me to give to Israel. So I told people that I know that are in Israel so they could relay those things. And they did. And things have been enacted over there. So I don't know if it was for the general public or for Israel. So um, Netanyahu uh, Netanya was attacked and I... I had a dream about that, that there would be terrorists there with rockets, and, and they just caught some terrorists there with rockets. First time ever. So anyway, let's talk about this Syrian thing. We know that Syria is involved in the end times, and we know that the rapture is going to take place fairly soon, uh, because Jesus said that that generation shall not pass away till all things be fulfilled when you see these things start to happen. So we know that. The word of the Lord is true, and we know that he is not slack, as men count slackness. Sometimes things are delayed. Sometimes things have to be manipulated. Look, Satan has power, and so do his angels. And uh, he's so powerful that his angel withstood Gabriel, one of God's angels who was sent to answer Daniel's prayer. He withstood him for 21 days until Michael, the archangel, came and made a way for Gabriel to get through to Daniel. There was a war in heaven, and there was a lot of destruction in the beginning when Satan was cast out. Satan still has his power, so does 
the fallen angels. So they are at war with God. This is a war over your soul. Over your souls. All of you. Pray for your loved ones. So, let's talk about the Russians. The Russians threatened Benjamin Netanyahu and President Obama not to interfere in Syria anymore. They told Netanyahu not to attack Syria anymore or there would be dire consequences. Russia has sent Iskander hypersonic missiles that are nuclear capable to Syria. Those missiles are capable of hitting a target 280 kilometers away that's the size of a refrigerator. They have also sold them S-300 missiles. The Russians have said, Lavrov has said that he will not send any new missiles there but they're going to complete the deal. There's a 144 missiles that are going there, these S-300s which are anti-aircraft missiles and they're capable of hitting rockets, missiles, or planes at ranges up to 300 kilometers or 200 kilometers. So they can they will stop Israel from attacking Hezbollah and from attacking them uh, attacking Syria in any way. They won't have air superiority unless there's some super secret tool that they can use and then what they'll do they're going to have Russians there manning these things and training these so if they attack these installations they'll kill Russians and it'll trigger a war with Russia. We know about Gog and Magog and the war that's going to occur and so there's going to be little skirmishes there that are going to bring them that's going to cause anger. Maybe they do attack them and kill some Russians. We don't know. The uh, Russia says that uh, U.S. and NATO will not overthrow Assad as they did Gaddafi. They threaten thermonuclear war, reprisals. There will be things that happen. They have just reinstated their fleet in in the uh, in those areas of the Strait and all that those areas over there in the Middle East after being after pulling out for 12 years now. They're back uh, more than 12 years. They are back again since 1992 or 90. One, they pulled out and now they're back. They're bringing in ballistic missile subs. They've already shown that they can have subs. They had a sub off of our coast for two weeks undetected. The Chinese popped up a Russian sub that they bought from Russia in the middle of our war games that were down there by San Diego about two years ago and fired a ballistic missile and then went back down and left and nobody caught them. They're challenging us. China's on their team too. Um, Russia told us, told Obama not to complete the missile defense system that we've been installing around them because it would shield Russia from being able to launch any ballistic missiles. And Obama said he wouldn't do it. Then he had Netanyahu apologize to Turkey. Turkey has the last component of this system, but they didn't turn it on or install it or allow our guys to come in there because we were taking Israel's side. Israel apologized. Now they've approved that deal, and now that missile defense system is going to come online. Do you think the Russians are going to allow that? No. The Lord says that he's shown many of us that as the missiles come down, we go up. Russia's going to attack. It's all part of the plan. I know. There are no Russians, there are no Americans, there's only one world order and they're playing these chess pieces against each side so they can have world dominance because they're working for the Antichrist who thinks, who they think is an alien or whatever maybe, just like the Pope says, why did this all come out all of a sudden? Now the Pope is talking about aliens and how they have a better gospel and all these things. Research it, it's on the internet. So to get to the point, I want you guys to pray because Shavuot is coming up. And what that is, is it's a holiday that celebrate that is to remember when the Torah was given. It's 50 days after Passover, which makes it the um, Pentecost. It's the sixth day of Sivan, which is the 15th day of this month of May. According to Jewish practices, it is customary to, to stay up the entire first night of Shavuot and study the Torah and pray as early as possible in the morning. Now I'm not saying you have to do that, but I want you to pray on that day. It's also known as the day of first fruits, since the primary purpose was to bring the temple the first fruits of the wheat harvest. We know that Jesus was resurrected at the barley harvest, the first fruits. He was the first fruits of the dead. Maybe we are the first fruits of the living. Maybe that's what it is. People keep talking about trumpets and and uh, tabernacles and things like that. It could also be this time because that has not been fulfilled either. The wheat harvest. It's a harvest. What did Jesus say? He said 
that he'd send his angels to harvest the wheat from the tares. So, I would like, I don't know why God has put this in my spirit, but I'd like each and every one of you to pray about this upcoming feast day. That the Lord would shorten the days so that he would uh, send his son as soon as possible. Every day that we delay, there are children that are dying. There are children that are uh, being tortured. There are Christians right now in foreign countries that are being tortured. They are in prison. There are all these terrible things happening to these people. They are in great tribulation. And if the Lord returns, all of that will stop for them. And every single child under the age of accountability will be taken, as well as all the believers. And then there will only be seven years left of Satan's rule on earth. And it will be the end. It will be finished. We'll have a thousand years of peace where Christ will reign here. And all these good things will come out of this. It will give those that are running from God, that know the truth, they will give, be given a second chance because they'll see what's going on and they'll have a second chance to repent and become saved. So, for their sakes also, I ask you to pray. You know, you could even fast that day or that the day before till the next morning. You know, skip a meal, whatever. The thing is, we need to be in prayer and we need to have faith. God wants you to have faith just because the rapture has been delayed. And we know things can be delayed because there's many times, look at Jonah and Nineveh. A hundred years went by and then that town was destroyed just as the Lord said. See, so God is talking to us and God is in control. We are not in control. This is a game, a war between him, excuse me, game is not a good word. This is a war between him and Satan for your souls, for our souls. Look at Obama as the Lord of the Flies. He also, if you've seen Jonathan Clegg's video, over five times flies of huge flies have landed right on his face in public buildings where there shouldn't be a fly. I've never had a fly land directly on my face like that. Have you? Think about that. This man is is uh, through peace has destroyed more people and just and the whole Middle East is upset because of him. He's the one that's been providing all this. He's the one that hasn't been backing. He's the one that hasn't been putting his hand out there to help people. And there's one of his servants flying around in here. Anyway, I'm asking you, in Jesus' name, to pray for Israel and to pray on the 15th of May that the Lord would shorten those days, that he would, he would send his son, that God himself would send his son to collect the bride. We have power. Though Jesus said, if there's two of you gathered together and you agree as touching anything and you ask it, that the Father would give it. So, do you have faith in Him? Do you believe in Him? Where is the power of God? That's what I want to know. Where is your faith? Where is your power that God gave you? Have faith in Him. Have strength in Him. Don't sit around and be, the rapture didn't happen yesterday. Pray that the Lord would send it. Look, we have power in numbers. If all these men get together with their numbers, that's 30,000 people that could be praying for the Lord to return on that day. God will hear us. He will shorten the days for our sake. He knows what kind of evil world this is. 